ComfortDelGro increasing taxi fares for the first time in 10 years, blaming rising costs and inflation. What happens if you test positive for COVID-19 and have to self-isolate for seven days? Ask ST has the answers. And how not to fall victim to scammers when they say there's a problem with your bank account. Good evening, you're watching The Big Story with me, Hairianto Diman. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you will not miss a single episode. Taxi fares are going up for the first time in 10 years. Leading taxi group Comfort Delgro announcing today that a flag down fare for a standard cab like the Hyundai i40 will increase from 370 to 390. The hike will take effect at 6 am on March 1st. Distance and time-based charges will also rise by two cents for normal taxis and three cents for limos. Comfort Delgro controls about 8,900 cabs or 60% of the entire taxi fleet in Singapore. Its fare adjustment is almost identical to the one it made in 2011. And just like in the past, the other four taxi operators are likely to follow the company's lead in raising fares. Senior Transport Correspondent Christopher Tan with more. Chris, raising the flag down fare by 20 cents may not seem like a lot, but factoring in other increases like distance and time-based charges, would a passenger have to pay significantly more for a taxi ride? Well, it depends on what you deem by significant. I think for a 10 km ride, which is the benchmark, uh, fares will go up by about 80 cents for off peak and a dollar or more for the same distance during peak period where there's a lot of waiting. Uh, so approximately that works out to be 8 to 10 percent, which is not a lot per se, but in the transportation sector, not insignificant either. Also considering, considering in the last few years, other components of the fare has gone up. For instance, uh, peak period has lengthened and then you have the introduction of things like search pricing. Um, so, so this adds up and you know, it's not insignificant. Now, Comfort Delgro says the move is to help cabbies defray higher operating costs, resulting from rising fuel prices and inflation. Now, in the last six months, our fuel prices have increased by about 10% on average. Christopher, how justifiable are these reasons? Well, I think it sounds reasonable. Pump prices have increased by quite a bit, but I can't think of a time when they actually lowered fares when pump prices fell. And looking at the big picture, a price increase, a fare increase is always double-edged, especially now when there are a lot of, of, of alternatives, like the private hire. Um, and also to know that uh, taxi rides are discretionary, or at least not all of them are compulsory. So people might, you know, switch to other modes of transport like public transport. Bus and train fares have also gone up since December 26. Uh, drivers are affected by rising transport costs as well with higher pump prices. It sounds like more pain for both commuters and drivers across the board, Chris? Yes, I'm glad you brought up uh, public transport uh, costs. Right? Uh, fares went up by about 2.2% uh, in comparison to taxi fare rises, which was uh, 8 to 10% we mentioned. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I think you know, bus and train fares affects a larger uh, portion of the population. And also we make a lot more trips by bus and trains than on taxis. Um, and also the fact that uh, people who rely on public transport uh, typically would not or do not own a car, or do not have access to a car and probably will only take taxis occasionally. So 2.2% versus 8 to 10% may seem like disproportionate. But I think if you, it adds up because the sheer number of trips that we make by bus and train each day, um, the cost actually might be more than 2.2%. Uh, and, and regarding uh, pump prices uh, for drivers, right, I think uh, for most drivers, uh, in comparison to the price they pay 
for the car and the other running costs like parking, insurance. Um, pump price increase, it's not a lot. Even though you know it's 10%, 10, 10 cents in the last several weeks. Right? Um, petrol cost, in the bigger scheme of things, is not a lot. And when a car costs you know, at least $100,000 and then operating costs like a parking, insurance, ERP, adds up to several thousand dollars. Chris, thank you for your perspectives, Senior Transport Correspondent, Christopher Tan. I know of a few people who've contracted COVID-19 and there's usually some confusion about what they should do when they test positive and have to self-isolate for seven days. Well, let's answer some common questions. You're automatically discharged after the seven-day isolation period and will receive a recovery memo. But what should you do if you're still testing positive? Well, you can go about your usual business if you're feeling well, because according to the Health Ministry, you're highly unlikely to be infectious by this time. For companies that require staff to show a negative ART result before being allowed back at the workplace, ST is checking with authorities to see if employers should practice this. But what if your ART negative before the seven-day isolation is over? Do you need a recovery memo to return to school or work? Well, there is no need for that. Schools and employers should recognise your negative ART result as proof that you've recovered from COVID-19. And if you're positive and didn't see a doctor, your results will not be captured in MOH's daily case count since there's no official record of your infection. For the same reason, your close contacts will not get a health risk warning. If you have been in close contact with someone with COVID-19 but haven't received any warning, then it's best that you monitor your health over a few days. As at yesterday, about 31,500 eligible people have yet to make their appointments for the COVID-19 booster shot in order to maintain their full vaccination status. MOH says that from February 14th, these individuals will no longer be considered as fully vaccinated. Instead, their vaccination status will revert to additional dose needed. This will also apply to those who received three doses of the Sinovac or Sinopharm vaccines, as well as other World Health Organization emergency use listing vaccines. Meanwhile, a couple was fined today for harassing their neighbours, a hospital nurse and his family amid the COVID-19 outbreak. According to court documents, among other acts, they had shouted at their neighbours using phrases like COVID spreader and virus family. The husband was fined $1,200 while his wife was fined $4,000. In this week's Invest segment, how to avoid falling victim to scams. The recent OCBC text message scam has once again showed just how large amounts of money can very quickly vanish in just a few clicks. 790 customers tricked into sharing their bank account details lost $13.7 million to the scam. Since then, banks have tightened security for digital banking, such as removing clickable links in SMSs or emails. Invest editor Tan Wee Boon has written about good banking habits that you need to stay safe from scammers, and he joins me now. Wee Boon, before we get to the habits, I want to ask first, what are scammers counting on when they pick a target? Well, I can answer this question easily with just one word, fear. When such scammers send you a message, they are hoping to put fear into you because when you become afraid, you are likely to rush and not think logically what to do next. So you end up just following their instructions, which is of course to click on the link in the message or key in your banking details. In some cases, they also ask you to call them. One of the most 
common fear tactics is to make the victim think that their accounts have been suspended. Other kinds of fear tactics would be to call you to inform you that one of your relatives are hurt or have been kidnapped. If this happens to you, just remember that you are in Singapore and that you can seek help from one of the best police forces in the world. So there's really no need to panic. Try calling your relative or your other kin yourself first. Stay calm until you reach someone because you can always call the police for help as a last resort. Okay, so Weibun, if I get an SMS or a phone call that says there is something wrong with my bank account, what should I do? Again, if you get such a message, the best response is actually to do nothing. Meaning you don't click on anything or follow any instruction in the message. First of all, you should know that no banks will send this kind of message to their customers. Just ask yourself this question. If your bank account is really suspended, why would the bank ask you to log in to activate it yourself? It does not make sense at all. If this is really true that the account is affected, chances are the bank will ask you to go to one of their branches or they will call you themselves. No bank will ask you to go and log in and check things yourself. If you are really worried that something may still be wrong, the best course of action is actually to call the bank hotline and ask them to check on your account. Chances are when you call the bank staff, they will tell you that they did not send such messages to you and that the message you get are likely from scammers. Just remember this. Despite what you may have seen in the movies, it is not easy to hack bank account. If it is that easy, scammers will just hack the banks and they don't need to bother you at all. The reality is they are counting on you to share your banking details with them. So never ever respond to any message or calls that require you to give such information away. If you really need to log in, do it on the official phone app or the bank official's website. If you just take these simple precautions, you will make it very hard for scammers to steal your money. Weibun, thank you for the tips. Invest editor Tan Weibun. The Straits Times has launched a Stop Scams campaign to create awareness and alert people to how they can protect themselves. You'll find stories and videos at str.sg forward slash stop scams. And those are our top stories for today. For more news, visit straightstimes.com and our YouTube channel for more videos. Remember to subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Harianto Diman. Join us tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.